Hey guys, hey everyone, hey girls, hi everyone. So I wanna give you a, a because this course is focused on TensorFlow.js more on the hands-on section because it's a very nice library. And the, the nice thing about this library is precise that you don't have to uh, you don't have to keep too much time with theory. However, I think it's, it's a kind of nice that we have a kind of discussion, at least the, the, the general principle. So I'm going to give you a crash view on TensorFlow.js. First of all, TensorFlow.js is called in JavaScript. That's the JS stands for TensorFlow JavaScript. JS stands for JavaScript. Uh, the, you may say that the, the first version, the inspiration came from TensorFlow, which is called in Python. So Python is uh, most likely if you are, if you heard about learning machine, uh, if you start somehow working with learning machine, most likely you, you have heard about or you are working with Python. R as well is a second option, but most of the of the of the library and so on, I, especially in, uh, that include TensorFlow, is in Python. But TensorFlow.js is the same. And the same group developed as as well in Java in Java. So uh, most of the machine learning is in Python. So if you talk about, uh, I think uh, from the examples that are famous, three of them are in Python. Then there is just one that is famous in TensorFlow.js, which is in JavaScript, which is something like uh, strange. If you come to could you think about it, since JavaScript is bigger community. It's much stronger in terms of number, in terms of option. Uh, if you have never worked with JavaScript before, I suggest you to start. It's very easy to start. And uh, it's a very rich, uh, very rich community. Uh, here you have the TypeScript, which is a, a type a, a improved, some people may say improved version, or uh, uh, may say improved version, hand version, which is JavaScript type it which has to do with what we're going to do. Angular, Angular, that we're going to call, is called in TypeScript. So TypeScript is a, is a kind of JavaScript, but uh, I myself, when I'm doing research, I always look for JavaScript results and it works just fine. The second one that's appearing here is Node.js, which has to do with the backend. We are not going to use Node.js, but if you want to work with backend, TensorFlow.js always, uh, they also have a version for Node.js. That's one of the biggest one of the most interesting part about this project is that it did not just provide a way to work with the browser. They also provide a way to work uh, in the server. So uh, it's, it's, it's the most used language. It's, as you can see here, I think it's going to stack overflow. It's the number one. It has been that for like this for a year. Uh, Python ranked third. Uh, but when it comes to learning machine, Python may, may be seen as the first one. I mean, I... I, I never worked with, with machine learning with Python. I, I always worked with MATLAB and so on. But I know that the Python gained a very strong community. Uh, a huge amount of people, they are using Python for, my, for learning machine. I uh, have used um, specifically MATLAB, which is a kind of a, uh, they call a fourth generation language. Uh, which I think was nice because they had a huge amount of the, of the libraries in, in the toolbox. Uh, but I think TensorFlow.js can offer you all of that that the, the MATLAB offered. And the best of all, it's for free. So JavaScript allows to access one of the most used environment, which is, which, which is uh, as I was reading before in a book, it's even intriguing because you have one of the most used environment with the browser that can do very heavy calculation. Uh, that's one of the biggest point of uh, the, the strongest point of Angular. That Angular was built in such a way that it's very easy for you to make calculation on the browser because once you separate the uh, as you, as we are going to see uh, during the course, Angular separate the logic from the front end, which means that if you, are, if, you, if, you, if you are working with HTML, you can see clearly uh, that you are working with TypeScript because the file is different. So if the file is separated, you can do all the magic. That, well, when I'm coding Angular, I, I don't see the difference between coding with Java, which is a back-end language, 
Uh, I don't see the difference between code sometimes with the MATLAB. The only difference is the is the is the is the, uh, it's a conversion. Is the is how you do stuff. But in general, for me, it's like an uh, com normally. Com so for me, even sometimes I have difficulty to find out that I, I'm working the front end. Uh, so. That's a good question. Why one of the big, one of the biggest environment for coding, which is the browser, is not being explored for machine learning? So one of the big, that's one of the biggest problems of TensorFlow.js. That's one of the reason I decided to to buy the, the as soon as I, I came to me a book, which I'm going to mention by the end of this set of slides. I'm going to mention a couple of book. I was very curious, and I'm still like learning. I think it's a very nice option. Option. So. Oh, um, Best of all, all the hardware is configured. I mean, yeah, uh, they did a very nice work with TensorFlow.js that they configured all the all the all the, the necessary uh, the, the necessary uh, hardware. You, so you don't have to use code uh, all this stuff that's specific from, from programmers. They're expert on the area. Uh, the only difficulty I, I faced is when you want to to work with you Node.js, know which is backend. So it starts to be a little bit. It starts to be a little bit comp complex because you have to configure some stuff that has to do with Python. I found it a little bit complicated, but I, you can do a lot on the browser. So I, at least in my case, I didn't see too much reason why I should have headaches since I uh, in the browser it has been enough for me. So Python, as I like to to to, to play around, uh, soon JavaScript is going to be. It's, it's already already it's a bigger language, but uh, on the machine machine learning community, uh, you already have the a very strong community being built up, and I, I hope with this course as well to give a kind of contribution to this uh, uh, this growth, which I think the, uh, uh, we have a base for the growth. So uh, a very interesting diagram is this one. As you can see, essentially JavaScript is everywhere. JavaScript is, is on the Internet of Things, is on the desktop, uh, it's on mobile. In the case of Angular, uh, you can build the you can build the very interesting mobile app uh, without necessarily have a second code. They have uh, what they call the reactive uh, reactive uh, design. Uh, which I have been using a lot. They, essentially, the the app is going to adapt according to the size of the of your of your app. So, uh, in the case of Angular, you can even build uh, your mobile without necessary uh, without necessary having to code in mobile. I think that's a very nice, interesting option for Angular, which you are. Uh, yeah. We're not going to explore that on this course because this course is not about Angular. But I want to say that when you get Angular in one side, you get TensorFlow.js on the other side, they're two very powerful options. So that's the reason why I think when you put together TensorFlow.js and Angular, you have a very rich set of options for you to work. Uh, on the server, you can do it in Node.js. And Node.js works very well with Angular because they have what, what you like to call mini stack, which is all the framework, all the stack is built on Java. So imagine all the stack built in Java. And the better, best of all, TensorFlow.js is also in Java. So we have machine learning uh, together with the web application. I think that's a very nice option. And, all, and, and here, what we are going to explore the, the browser. The browser is very interesting because you have all these options here, and all of them is already available everywhere. I mean, every computer has a browser. Uh, every essentially, um, uh, so I think that's a very strange sometimes when you think about why Python is so mo much more powerful. I have, somehow, sometimes I have the feeling that uh, that's because some people start to build, the other ones start to build on top of it. Uh, but uh, I think we should not uh, neglect the power of TensorFlow.js, which uh, at the moment is the only option that you have, but already quite powerful as I have been testing. You can even build a model like uh, like for research because you can uh, build your model like layer for layer. They have even transfer learning. I, I didn't have test all these options, but I know that's possible. So uh, I have I have written a couple articles on the Medium, which I'm going to leave for you as a testament. If I forget any of them, you can let me know. Uh, just send me a message. But in general, I'm going to leave for you here the 
the the link here. So uh, I, as I read in a book, in a book which is one of the reference I'm using, they say that we build, we build the pillar and JavaScript belong together. I, I also believe too. Uh, the good news is that if they build the TensorFlow JS to be uh, uh, they uh, they build this for just to be compatible with TensorFlow. I have not tested this option, to be honest. I know they have some package, some library that you can install and you can make the conversion, but even the notation is, is more or less the same. Uh, in our case, I have used a Python version. I mean, I went to, to Kengo, uh, which is the place where is you can find our database. Our database is publicly available on Kengo. Uh, so there I was, I didn't know how I went to start when I was coding, I just went there, I take a look on the code of Python, uh, the notation is more or less the same, I think, he, uh, so it was very easy for me to, to, to manually, yeah, here I didn't use a library, but to manually move from one to the other. I think that was very interesting, this, this, uh, I was very curious how similar they are, I, maybe the future, I even think to see how easy to adapt, uh, because a huge amount of book uh, on Python, because Python is already for more, uh, more powerful for quite a while compared to TensorFlow.js. So um, I think that can, it could be even easy to make these adaptations. So uh, this course was born from, to a certain extent, this course was born from a, a project that I had in the past, which is TensorFlow.js in Angular. So essentially you are, you, you are, you are seeing a course which is called, which came from this project my TensorFlow.js in Angular. So I was I was testing. So uh, what you are seeing here is the result of all those tests, all this work. And what I can tell you that it was quite interesting. The, so my, my hypothesis is that Angular offer more powerful tool than plain JavaScript. So instead of using JavaScript plain, uh, for example, Angular has Angular material, which is a very uh, beautiful way for you to build your 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 front end. Uh, they have uh, a considerable amount of options just Firebase, which you can easily be connected to a database. So there is a huge amount of options in Angular, which I, I have the feeling that it would be quite useful if you are building machine learning apps. Uh, 